Welcome to There is a Method to the Madness. My name is Rob Maxwell. I'm an exercise physiologist and personal trainer. I'm the owner of Maxwell's Fitness Programs, and I've been in business since 1994. Purpose of this podcast is to get to the real deal, talk about the science, tell you what really works, why things work, and hence the name Method to the Madness, because we have to know the whys. If we know the whys of things, we'll be more likely to do them and more likely to stay away from things when we know that we should. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the old Achilles heel of spot reduction. It rose its ugly head again. Before I get to that, let me thank Jonathan and Lynn Gilden of the Gilden Group at Real G Pros. They sponsor this podcast. They sponsor many of our events, and they're the absolute best. It's a changing real estate market. Jonathan and I talk about it a lot. It's not as easy to sell your house as it used to be. My next-door neighbor's house is still sitting there on sale. It's been a long time. Now, a couple years ago, that thing would have blown off the market. So you need a pro to help you, and they're the pros. 386 451 Two, four, one, two. All right. So I often talk to trainees, people I coach, things of that nature, people like that, I should say, you know, about some of their habits when they ask me, when they talk about like things they want to work on. And a lot of times it's mental. A lot of times it's like learning how to focus and learning how to pay attention to what we should be paying attention to which I guess is the definition of focus. So I, you know, I talk a lot about the uh, staying off of social media, you know, and it's like, and no, I'm not, you know, one of these boomers because technically I'm not a boomer, but I'm not one of those that says it's all bad and all that. I mean, nothing's really all bad, is it? It's, but it is one of those things where there is a lot of toxicity out there, negativity, and we have to learn to filter it. So I lead that in, or that's my lead in, I should say, to talk about what I'm going to talk about today, which is spot reduction. For me, I don't get on there a whole lot. Like I can be guilty of checking sports scores on Twitter because it's pretty impersonal, but it's still, I mean, Twitter's the worst. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's probably the most toxic out of all of them, but because It's not personal, at least to me. I just pay attention to sports. It's still a time waster, don't get me wrong. But I use my Instagram accounts, my Threads accounts, and Facebook, you know, for my job because I think I want to try to be a positive influence in the fitness world. So I try to post appropriate form on exercises and I post the videos and the podcasts and things like that. But I'm not much of a scroller. I, I don't know. I just, I don't like to do that a whole lot. Now, but as soon as I logged on this morning, which was later, because I always have a little rule, don't touch my phone for the first couple hours, you know. But first thing I did when I went to my phone and checked social media, Facebook, I go to Facebook and there is this ad. And I laughed because it was this ad of this older gentleman I don't know how old. He probably looked to be in his 70s. Very good condition. Not blaming this man at all. He's just the model for this company. And uh, he was doing some form. He was doing a yoga exercise. To me, it didn't look like yoga. I mean, it looked more like he was doing a calisthenic, but it was an ad for yoga and it was a yoga program. And again, this was an older gentleman, 70s maybe, and he looked to be pretty ripped, like he had a six pack and And it said something to the effect of, you know, don't let age fool you. You can get fit at any age, which is absolutely 100% true. But it wasn't an ad for exercise and aging. It was an ad for yoga. And then it went on to say, if you just follow our program, you can take all of these inches off of your waist. And I was like, oh, God, they're still pushing spot reduction. And I mean, look, that's what capitalistic companies are going to do. I've said it before. It's like, you know, if if you can make money on it and you're, it's, you're allowed to do that. It's legal. I mean, can't stop companies from doing that. You can call them out maybe, which I did, 
But, you know, it's buyer beware. So these companies are still doing it, which means people are still falling for it. So I wrote, you know, a little comment underneath, which I, uh, I usually don't, but I wrote underneath. I said, there's no such thing as spot reduction. If you want flat abs or a flat stomach, it's going to come from your diet and losing weight, which is the absolute truth. So it gave me the idea, number one, to talk about this today. Number two, that's going to be a little bit of my focus here. I want to try to be a positive influence on social media and make sure that what we're putting out there is the truth. I mean, I do anyway, but I'm just saying, you know, maybe I need to have more of a presence of putting the cold, hard facts out there, which really aren't that hard once you learn them. I mean, really, the real deal is maybe it takes more work and it can be boring, but it's more simple than what some of these people will lead you to believe. So let's start with spot reduction because this yoga ad, and I have no problem with yoga. In fact, I help out Daytona Beach Shores with the Mayor's Fitness Challenge, and I told them I would continue to come on Wednesdays and help them with their strength class because people seem to be really thrilled, and I felt so appreciated with it, and I'm like, oh, that kind of feels good that they were calling for me to somehow come back, and so I agreed to come back and teach their class because I really enjoy it. I mean, it's people that, you know, ordinarily aren't doing personal training, and they're getting some good coaching, and it's a lot of fun, and there's a lady who takes the class who teaches yoga. So I said, yeah, by all means, give me your cards because I really want to get my clients to somebody who seems to know what they're doing. And she does. She does yoga, in my opinion, the right way, which is working on the mind-body connection, flexibility, core strength, and all that good stuff. So I have zero issues with yoga. I think it's a great activity. I have issues with anybody selling false beliefs. And there's no truth to that you can exercise an area smaller. That's called spot reduction. It's like, you know, I say it reared its ugly head because probably this is number one with every personal trainer and every you know, qualified personal trainer hears this at some time or another. Say, well, can't we work this area because I don't like how it looks? It's like, okay, that's spot reduction. Now, if you say, can I work this area because I want to add muscle here and make it bigger, more defined, that's different. But if you're talking about making an area smaller, and I have to be careful with even saying more defined, because that is still going to come down to losing body fat, okay? That's all that that is. So the method to the madness, all right? These are two different tissues. They're two different tissues. So you got fat tissue and you have muscle tissue. And when you lose weight, you don't just lose it from one area because you're exercising that area. That's called spot reduction. That doesn't work. That is not how it works. So the method to the madness tells you why, gives you the science. When we lose weight, we lose it from the area. When we lose fat, I should say, we lose it from the area that's got the most subcutaneous body fat. That's the second law of thermodynamics, meaning that Basically, energy runs downhill. So when we have a large surplus, it's going to come from that area. And everybody's a little bit different. Some people tend to store more body fat across their midsection, and we call that android obesity. And some people tend to carry it more in their hips and legs, and we call that gynoid obesity. When we lose weight, we lose it from the area of the greatest deposit, period. And we lose it slowly through a caloric decrease. That's it. That's it. A caloric deficit. That's how we lose weight. When we lift weights, when we use dumbbells, when we do strength exercises, whatever you want to call it, when we do calisthenics, we are not using fat tissue, right? I mean, I hope you know that. You're using muscle tissue. And if the muscle is broken down enough, during that workout, and remember what we call that, that's called catabolism. So you're literally breaking down the muscle through stress, through overload. If you have sufficient rest and recovery, meaning you rested, 
and you ate appropriately, then anabolism will occur. An anabolic response will occur. That means the muscles will actually hypertrophy. So they will get bigger and don't freak out. That's a genetic thing too. Not everybody can get big. It takes a lot for people to increase their muscle mass to the point where somebody actually notices, but we all can get stronger. So these are totally, totally, number one, two different tissues, fat and muscle, two complete different systems. You got your skeletal muscle, muscular system, and you have your fat system, your metabolic system, completely different. It's going to take, you know, a caloric deficit throughout the day to even start to move the needle on body fat. And it's going to come off in the spot where you have it the most and work its way. Now, for like some guys, they tend to, if they're working out a lot and they're lean and they do physique competitions and things like that, they're already pretty lean. So when they go to get ready for a contest, they diet down a little bit more. They lose more body fat. And yes, some of that does come off their midsection, but not because they are hitting their abs and all that. And I'm going to get to that in a second. It's because they're just so lean, you don't even notice it anywhere else. And as they lose weight, now you can see that maybe half an inch they lost because they're so freaking lean. And so they go from like a four pack where most of their muscles show, which is really great, right? I mean, if you're into that, what I mean is that that's very lean. And then they get to a six pack. Why? Not because they were doing their abs, but because they actually lost more body fat. They maybe went from 7% body fat to 4% body fat. So they're ripped. So there's no body fat there. And you're seeing their abdominal muscles it has nothing to do with their core training. I mean, that just, it just lights me up because it's like, Number one, I've been saying this for 30 years and people have to start to get it. And, you know, even clients after a while will say like, oh, can we throw in some more core? You know, and, and it depends on what kind of mood they catch me on. You know, if I'm like in a real patient mood, I'll, you know, say, well, OK, but why? You know, why do we want to do more core? There's nothing wrong with that. Are you are you a swimmer and we have to strengthen your core? We're going to do some planks and some side planks. No, 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 no. I, I, you know, I want it to look better. I mean. They know not to say that now, but you know, if, I, if I'm not, I'm going to be like, why, well, you know, why, why do you want to do more core? What don't you get? So I try to answer that question when I'm in, you know, a good mood. And for those that listen to the podcast, know that that means that I already worked out that morning. You know, for me, that's, uh, that's going to be the game changer when that happens. So getting back to my story with the bodybuilders, it's funny. They do so little core when it's competition time or really in general, like so little core. Why? Now, when I say that, I'm saying it in the realm that you know core. So midsection, stomach. They actually do a lot of core as in their obliques and lower back. And that's really official core. But they do very little abdominal training. Some do absolutely zero because they know the way their abdominals are going to show is going to come from a reduction in body fat. And they want to use all of their well used time, I should say, all of their time in the gym working on areas they need to work on, like maybe more quad development or lat development or deltoid development or calf development. But they're not going to sit there and waste their time doing 200 crunches when they know like this is so silly. Now, your abdominals are mostly, mostly not all slow twitch muscle fibers. So each muscle group on you and me has a slight difference in slow twitch to fast twitch. So slow twitch muscle fibers really don't even grow in the, in the realm of hypertrophy anyway. They more or less grow kind of longitudinally. They don't really grow outwardly and the abdominals are like that. So, you know, they, they don't worry about that. They're just, they want to put their focus in the gym on muscles that are going to grow. And they know that if they're going to show good abs, it's going to come from having a very low percentage of body fat. I remember when I did my very first show, I was 27 and I was 
in the best shape of my life as far as aesthetics go. And, uh, you know, everybody commented on that. Wow, you know, you must have been doing all these crunches, abs, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, if I knocked out 100 a week, then that was a good week. And I usually just did it as a warm up because I knew even then before I wasn't even really complete with my education yet. And we're never complete, but I wasn't complete with my master's degree. I already knew that, you know, and I said, no, it came from diet. It came from this lean, nutrient dense, boring diet for 10 weeks. If you really want those kind of abs, that's a heck of a lot harder, by the way. Like I think if you talk to anybody preparing for a show or wrestlers trying to get in condition for their bout and they have like three pounds to lose over a week and they're like, oh man, I mean, anybody would rather just say, all right, give me 30 minutes of abs, just 30 minutes hard. Everything you can throw at me, scissor kicks, flutter kicks, crunches, reverse crunches, plank. I'd much rather do that. I mean, and, and personally, I believe that's one of the fascinations with them is they are easy as far as that goes. And they're not very, uh, you know, difficult with lactic acid and all that kind of stuff. And it's a heck of a lot harder to watch what we put in our mouth. So, you know, they're really the path of least resistance as crazy as that sounds. But, you know, if you see these ads or anything that you're, you're unsure of, maybe you don't know. It's not your job to know. You know, hit me up, ask me, you know, you see this crazy exercise or crazy philosophy, hit me up and I want to just give you the real deal. I want to give you the science. That is the whole reason behind this podcast. All right, please, no spot reduction. Remember that no matter what area you pick, no spot reduction does not work. A physical impossibility. Speaking of impossibility, it is impossible to find a better garage door company in Daytona Beach. Overhead door of Daytona Beach is the outright best. Best product, best service. If you need help, please check them out. Overhead door, Daytona.com. BMAX fit, BMAX well. <laughs>